What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 27, returning today on the back of our first four games with Liverpool, two wins and two draws, no defeats to start the season off, let's try and keep it that way as today we'll play through most of Sloggy's season and try and get through to December with big games in the Premier League, our first game in the Cup with Liverpool against Stoke in the EFL Cup third round and we'll add the return to the Vitality Stadium as well, really looking forward to that, so loads to get through, we'll crack straight on, our first game is away the Emirates against Arsenal. Big game here between both teams that will be battling, I'm sure, for a top four place. North London, Emirates Stadium, first game today. Come with you, Reds. Don't forget, as we discussed in the last episode, the board have asked us to win a domestic double this season, which to me, as I mentioned before, is a, a, a little a little strong. A little strong. Is it doable? I guess so. But we are a team going for a rebuild, you know. And I said I wish EA were kind of taken into consideration, you know. Like when when you get to a certain level, your objectives they never they never get downgraded or decreased. You know, is that a pen? Oh wow! And um, it's it's kind of restricts. It's like don't get me wrong, we are technically a five star team. We are still one of the biggest clubs in England and in Europe. But it's a soft penalty in my opinion. Now, um, but it's it's still a lot to ask for a team that are going for a rebuild and a big transition as well surely they should decrease their expectations now or in what you call a transitional period Bukayo Saka stands up and Allison makes to say ball don't lie still no no a good example is, uh, is Chelsea you know a few years ago they won the Champions League you know the the, the pinnacle but they're not that Chelsea right now, you know, they want to be in time, but they're going for a rebuild, they're going for a transition. No one was going to be asking Pochettino to win a domestic double at Stamford Bridge this year, you know, so that's something I just wish that, uh, oh yes, great ball, yes, I wish EA would look into as well. Cody Gakpo, what a start for August's player of the month, five goals in as many games, he's on fire. So I'm looking for that leveller and oh wow that, now this one I, I don't have a problem with Levi Colwell has just given away his second penalty of the afternoon we've brought him in to make a big difference to our back line and to be fair I mean we've had three clean sheets in a row but that that now the first one I don't think was a penalty that one definitely is Saka oh sees Allison gets the right way again but this time too much power for the Brazilian to get his gloves on Sec second penalty I've given away. First one, bad decision. Second one, clear penalty. Not, not a great start from Levi this afternoon as it's 1-1. Uh, it's and Diaz, I see, I see Gakpo. Can I find him? And Salah. Oh, instant response. Liverpool back in front right from kickoff, And it's Mo Salah to restore the lead. Still got it. It's why he gave him the extension. Pace is gone. But technically, this guy's still sublime. No, Smith Rowe. Oh, what a finish. I literally was on his shoulder for about <laughs> 10 seconds. And he, he, just, he just was like, no, like, I'm not going to let you take the ball off me. With McKenzie at right back going all the way into the middle. That is such a poor goal to concede. The two goals are conceded here really poor. We shipped four on the opening day at Goodison. And the two goals here have been woeful for me. Granted, three clean sheets in a row is nice. But that doesn't take away from what has been... Not exactly what you call convincing defending. The only good thing is that on the other end, we look like we could score with every attack. Eberet Gize has just proved it. Liverpool back in front, and it's a first in Liverpool for Eberet Gize. Five goals in North London. Yes, one in camera. Uh, McKenzie to Jarrell. And this game is looking as though it's all but over. And as McKenzie is going to wisely go to the corner in the final 30 seconds. Just wrap this up. There we go. Easy money. Easy money. Job done. And it is going to be... Oh, good ball. He's A. Oh, it should have been a fourth. A Liverpool win. Absolutely blew that chance to get a dagger. In the end, we don't need to because the job was complete beforehand. That'll do it. 3-2. And it is our second away day victory and a return to winning ways as well. No losses in our first five games. This is about as good of a start as I could have been hoping for with our new look Liverpool team in rebuild mode. I'm, I'm pleased with this start. That's a great away day victory there. Just before we jump into that following game against Burnley, I just want to briefly look at this in the, uh, in the squad hub. Ben, ben McKenzie, 
has Corona rating 76 overall, and I've got him on that. There we go. Defensive wide back development plan to get his defensive work rate from, from medium to high. Um, I I don't know whether I should try and make this guy my uh, official right back, inverted. I mean, makes sense, because Robertson's not getting getting any worse yet. And uh, we don't really have an official right back, to be fair. Moose is just playing it. I might do that, you know. I might do that. Why not? All right, anyway, um, sorry, following game, uh, Burnley, as we aim to get back-to-back -back wins and a big three points here to stay where we are right now, which is in the top four. Burnley at home should be a banker. Got to win your home games. You want to be a Champions League tight, uh, team. Come on, you Reds. Opening half an hour, just haven't been able to break Burnley down as of yet. Here is the young lad, McKenzie, into Salah. Now Kamara, he's a Diaz. There we go, first time we get inside. And the Colombian gets his first goal of the season as well. We, we are going to need successors for Diaz and Salah, not before long. But for now, they're still able to be starters in our front three, either side of Cody Gakpo. It's the Colombian with the opener, Liverpool in front. I think for Salah, um, I do want a left footer on that side. But for Diaz, I think we already have the replacement in the team already. Oh, play of ice, please, ref. And that's the man on the ball right now, Eberechi Ize. Because a wonderful build-up and... Curtis Jones, it's the post and Burnley clear. To me, he's, a, he's playing CM in that in that midfield trio. Listen, he's more than good enough to, to come forward from a deep position and impact the game there. But I actually think personally in this team, he'd be better being converted to an inside forward on the left. He spent time playing directly through the middle, slightly further forward, and on the wings as well, as although Femi is denied. To me, I see him being our long-term successor for Diaz. The only thing that Eze doesn't really have is what you call blistering pace. You know, he's, he's quick, but he's not, you know, lightning quick, if that makes sense. As McK oh, McKenzie! McKenzie! McKenzie, yes! Come on! Ben McKenzie! First for Liverpool, and the youngster's first in pro football as well. Well, this is why we're training him now as an inverted wide back, because it will get his weak foot up from three, eventually to five star as well. And with Robertson showing no signs of decline, if he is going to be starting in our back four, it'll have to be on that right hand side. Three star weak foot, like a five star weak foot there. Drills it in with a weaker right foot. Liverpool two goals up. Already got an assist, now he's got a goal as well. Yeah, we, we didn't bring in a right back in this summer transfer window. Question marks over that. Eyebrows raised. But let's just say we had a plan. And that plan is uh, coming to fruition early. Salah. Oh, what a save by James Trafford on Mo. But still leading Mo too. And this game looks all but done. Get a third goal and that will do it. And it's Burnley right now. Just trying to hang on in there for as long as possible. Still technically in the game. Diaz, great delivery. Free header, 3-0. Free header for Cody. You cannot give him that sort of space in the area, and that is going to do it. Gakpo is on absolute flames right now. Back-to-back -back wins, another clean sheet on the board, and no losses in our first six games. This is about as good as we could have hoped for in our first season with our new look Liverpool side. Long, long, long way to go, though. Taking absolutely nothing for granted. Right, following game, EFL Cup third round on Wednesday night against the Championship side Stoke City. This doesn't count towards the objectives, which is really important, but I'd still love to win it. I think we've got a definite chance as well. Let's get through the first round. We enter first. Come on, you Reds. I don't really know why it's not considered an objective within the game. It never has been, and I don't know why. Um, it, it just kind of confuses me because it's like, I get it. It's not like the most prestigious of, of competitions. We all accept that. But it's like the further a team goes, the more they want to win it. Go on, let's go, Ben. Uh, the, the more they want to win it. It's like Liverpool, for example, this year. Like, you know, maybe in the first or second round, it would have been a bit like, eh, you know, if we go out, we go out. Eh. But the further they go, quarters, semi, and into the final, they really want to win it. And they did, and you could see how much it meant to them. Klopp even said, I think it was one of his best achievements as a Liverpool manager. I think due to the uh, the lineup, they ended up finishing the game with. But even so, it's still a trophy that they would want. It's still a trophy that anyone wants. So why it doesn't count towards the objective, I don't I don't really understand that personally. Anyway, Ben Dope with the opener, makes it 1-0, and Javi Guerra could have made it two. Excellent save. Kwanzaa to Danilo. Club captain here at Liverpool now, don't forget. I don't know why. I always find it very strange, you know, when like a, a, a team within a save, an AI team changes captain, and it's like, why? Like, I, you know, fair enough, Trent's gone, Van Dyke's gone, I get that, but it's like, you've still got Alisson, you've still got Sally, you've still got Robertson, you've still got Diaz, and they've given it to 
Dan Elo, very strange, but uh, if he listen, if, if they gave it to him, I'll keep it with him for at least the first season before he retires, and uh, and then look to take it off him for uh, for next season. Even so, I still need him by one. This game almost over. Uh, we might be able to get a second goal here after a quick little turnover. Fabio Carvalho, water ball, and Athena Jan. Says Doxy Boy, I used to do it against you all the time, and now I'll do it for you. First for Athena Jan for me, and Liverpool are through to the fourth round. Yep. Every time I face Athena Jan in this year's FC, he always scores against me. So that's why he's off limits in this Liverpool team. I need to keep him to stop him scoring against me for opposition. So through to the fourth round, and we'll quickly get back to the main menu, and we should see directly afterwards who we'll take on in the fourth round. It may well be Bournemouth who just knocked out Spurs. Don't forget the holders are Arsenal after we lost to them with Bournemouth last season. And it's going to be... Wait, no, we need one more advance. It is going to be... There we go. Wait for it. Here we go. Fourth round. Lincoln City, the Imps, away from home. So very good chance made it through to the quarterfinals there. And interestingly enough, directly after that game, Alisson comes to us and says, Hey Gaffer, it's been going really well for us recently. You know how happy I am playing for you and playing for this club. I just wondered if this might be a good time for us to talk about renewing my contract. So yeah, in that case, let's look it out right now. Alisson, like I said, is in his early to mid-30s now. But a good thing about goalkeepers is they don't tend to decline until their mid to late 30s. So at 33 years old, he's not going to decline for at least another year or two. And after four clean sheets in six games, he's wearing the armband when Danilo isn't starting. So would that be in the case, Alisson, I think, should stay. He's been at Liverpool for so many years now. He's already established as one of the best goalkeepers in the modern Premier League era. And would that be in the case, just like Salah, OK, he might not be in his technical prime right now, but he's still more than good enough for this Liverpool team, and especially as a senior dressing room leader for the youngsters through this transitional period. Whoa, five years. <laughs> Maybe not, maybe not up to that point, but an extra two years, that'll take us all around. Yeah, 35, 36, and that I think will be absolutely perfect for Allison. So, yeah, we'll give him a slight wage increase for his final few years, 160 grand a week, and he says that's totally fine. Allison stays, and he'll be staying until retirement. Moving on, next up, Nottingham Forest away at the City Ground, just one point taken from their first six games, and heading to this one, a win here could potentially send us top of the table for the first time this season. Come on, Liverpool. I'm always wary when you, like, Give a give a nickname like the Reds uh, to a team, for example, because that can be used for lots of different teams. I mean, you know, including the team we're facing right here. So it's it's one of those things. It's like where, when I was a kid, it was like, for example, I, I used to just always use yes, Cody Gakpo. What a start! United, you know, as a uh, as a nickname, if you will, for Manchester United. And in a, in a weird way, that was that was okay, if you will, because my brother and Manchester United, uh, brother and uh, dad are both big Manchester United fans. But uh, you know, as you get older and you realise that there's so many teams that could be applicable to it. It's like, well, maybe maybe that nickname shouldn't be just like universally given to one team, you know. But um, even so, heading is this one here, Cody Gakpo, the open. How good. It's Cody Gakpo being the start of the season off, man. I said I was so excited to use him. I'm a massive fan of his in real life. As Allison makes a good stop. He is on absolute flames right now. And the bookie's early favour, I'm sure, for the uh, Golden Boot winner. Liverpool in front in a battle of the Reds here at the City Ground. Yeah, nicknames are always a strange one because it's like there's multiple teams that have like the same one, you know? Um, if not their primary, then their secondary nickname. And again, you could you could... Oh, Salah, what a goal. You could you could easily call either of these teams the Reds, but right now it's a team that are in white that are absolutely flying to start this game off and start the season off as well, and that is a contender for goal of the season early. Salah gets down to his feet. We're not going to see this guy use that lightning and quick pace anymore because he ain't got it, but like I said, when we extended that contract, he's still got the technical ability in abundance. Ben's one in, top bins. Liverpool, two goals up. Jarrell to McKenzie, through to... Salah, 5-7 in seven now after that wonder goal in the first half. And McKenzie continues his run. Curtis Jones gets to Cody. There is Ben out wide. Oh, what a chance. Curtis, for his first since returning, ain't going to miss that. Two assists for Ben McKenzie to go along with a goal as well. And Curtis Jones' homecoming season is looking already like it could be one to remember. His first since returning, 3-0, and these points are in the bag. It's going to be... Four straight wins for Liverpool in all competitions. 
best run since joining them. Right, following game, a fantastic Leeds United side at home right now in fourth place. Heading into the game, one of only two sides to remain undefeated in the Premier League. That other team, our former team, the Cherries who are top. Let's keep pace with our ex-side Bournemouth and get another big win here and make it five in a row in all competitions. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, this is the table pre-game. I was like, wow, Leeds are off to an amazing start. And then I looked at the lineup heading into this game and I was like, well, I can see why. Joshua Serksy, Ritz is still there, Melier is still there, Brozovic, Ugarte, Zaniolo. I mean, this is a class Leeds team, man. Absolutely class. And I love it when the AI actually builds a good squad. Do you know what I mean? They've got a wrench there as well at fullback as Luis Diaz is denied by the young French shot stopper. I, it just seems to be the way that AI clubs don't seem to build squads very well in career mode, but also in football manager as well. They're not quite as bad as football manager. So it's, it's always nice when you see an AI team build a really, really solid team. Leeds have done that in this save. Cole to Ize. And two of the players that were rescued from relegation, if you will, linking up there as now Diaz takes over. Eberechi continues his run. We'll find him down the left-hand side. And Ize takes it himself, just couldn't pull the trigger, and stays down as well. He's just wary of that there. I thought he might, and he does. Everetti goes down, hits the deck, and that might be our first injury of the season. Taking no chances as well. Subbed him off at the break for Musa, as we're still tied at 0-0. With that Bournemouth game coming in two weeks' time after the international break, as Jorginho Rutter makes it 1-0. What a, what a player he is, man. And, and Leeds fans will tell you this has been balling out in the Championship, trying to guide them straight back to the Premier League, and he's developed brilliantly within this save as well. 54 minutes in, goal down, and possibly our first loss of the season with Liverpool. Plenty of time, but haven't been in my best in this one, I'll be honest. And needing someone to step up out there and find a leveller. There's McKenzie, just couldn't get away. Yeah, I think this is going to be our first loss as Liverpool manager. Or will it? Musa, what a ball. Diaz, the Colombian, to the rescue. What a save, Melier. Two minutes on the clock and the young Frenchman has just ensured Liverpool will get the three points. Oh, he's done it again. What a brilliant couple of saves. First on Diaz, then on Colwell. Liverpool huffing. Puffin, but are going to run out of steam right at the end. It's Melier to the rescue. And they're trying to get Leeds back to the Premier League in real life. They've just ended Liverpool's unbeaten start under Doxy Boy. A rear guard defensive effort at the end. Leeds get a huge three points at Anfield and show why they're a top 14 to start this season off. And thankfully for Ize, he'll bounce back for the following game after a bruise and will need to bounce back as well as we face the league leaders away in Dorset and we return to Bournemouth for the first time since leaving. Boos or gratitude from the fans? I don't know, I guess we'll see. But the most important thing is we return to winning ways here. Buzzing for this one. First game back in Dorset against our former team, Bournemouth. Come on, you cherries. Nope, come on, Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, it's the first game I'll circle in the calendar. Like, when, when when you join a new team, if you're managing in the same division, the first game you look out for is when you go back home. You know, when, 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 when are you back? When are you back against your former team, you know? And with a start that Bournemouth have made this season, they've had those overall spikes for a few players. Vinicius now 86 overall, Jack Clark 90, Kirk has 89. You can see why they're top. They've just had their first loss as of whim. You can see why they're top. You can see why this guy is dominating the start of the season off at now 90 overall. This is, this is going to be huge, man. Both teams know if they want to be in a title race and more importantly, a top four place, this is an early... Clashed at neither can afford to lose. Cody Gakpo trying to run through. Going all the way. Cody Gakpo, surely! Bournemouth behind. 12 minutes in. And it's Cody Gakpo firing Liverpool in front early. Man, I love this guy. Absolutely love him. He's, he's a player who, you know, since coming to Liverpool... I actually said this. I think it was during this save earlier on that... He's had some criticism at times and a lot of praise at times as well. He's been very, what you'd call, unpredictable. Kind of like Darwin Nunez, but I, I'm a big fan of his man. I really am. He's got great hustle, great energy. And I, I, I really feel as though he's a great fit for Liverpool's team as well. And hopefully he will be for many years to come, even in the post-Jurgen Klopp era. 
And I'm loving him in the save right now, man, because he's, he's balling out to start the season. I think it's seven goals already now. No doubt about it. He's looking like he's odds on to win the Golden Boot this year. Pedro Neto stepping in field. Oh, good stop by Allison. Jack Clark to Tyler Adams. Gives it him back. Now, Kirkes down the left. This left side pairing have grown unbelievably since we left. Clark at 90. Kirkes at 89 overall. And Jack's done brilliantly well there. There's Grimar Reyes, one of the new signings for the Cherries in the post Doxy Boy era. Denied by Allison as his compatriot keeps it at 1 0. It's Bournemouth off to a good start in this second half. You can tell they were they were told to come out all guns blazing. Oh! To find out level. Because they don't want to lose to their former manager. Come on now. There's Jack Clark. Blasts in the level up. Ryan Christie pokes it through the gap. He gets in behind Ben McKenzie. And should Allison be beaten from there? Uh, I'm not too sure, personally. It's always a little bit sus when a keeper is beaten from that angle. I think a keeper of his class should be saving that. Jack Clark with the level of though. And the 90-rated ex-Black Cat puts Bournemouth back on level terms. As McKenzie finds Jones. Diaz. Eberechi, well wide. Time to go. Can we hold on to a, uh, a credible point away in Dorset? Not an easy place to come these days. As we're still tied. And we could we could possibly go for a winner, but what we don't want to do is lose this game by chasing all three points. If we've got to take a draw, so be it. But we still could win it. Surely! Yes, come on! Cody Gagbo breaks Bournemouth heart with his brace and Doxy Boy will return with a win with his new team and it's the top scorer Gagbo or another. It's one of those where it's stick or twist really but you know the old saying fortune favours the brave and Liverpool look as though they have got the win just got to defend this final attack which is sent out wide to Frenderoop and Robertson blocks the cross, and that is going to do it. It's a massive bounce-back victory in Bournemouth as Doxy returns and steals the three points at the death as well. Did amazing work in our three years with the Cherries, but we knew we'd have to move on at some point. We have. We got off to a fly with Liverpool, and this is the perfect way to respond on the back of the last two leads. Huge three points, and it will keep us in the top four. However, I will say this, Mr. Jack Clark, if Bournemouth don't make the Champions League for next season and we do finish top four, I'm coming for you. I'd love to bring you with me to Anfield, albeit a season after I arrived. Anyway, following game back home, aiming to get back to winning ways at home, I was taking on Leicester City at Anfield, looking for back-to-back -back wins here and staying in the top four. Come on, Liverpool. There has been an injury for Camera in this first start. That's about it thus far, though. That's a shame, too, because he started off really well in an anchorman role. His passing's been good. His Diaz almost got through there. And I think that's going to be a little bit longer than a, uh, a bruise. I'll keep you posted on that, but I think that's going to be camera done for at least, at the very, very least, four weeks. As he's found Cody Gakpo. Oh, he just about squeezed it in. Liverpool in front as Cody Gakpo right now is playing the PlayStation. His, his, his stats are video game numbers. Well, that was a pretty awful game. But what's that saying? You know you love it. A sign of a champion is someone who can win when they haven't played well. 1-0 victory against the Foxes. Back to winning ways at Anfield. But how bows the camera injury? Well, let's have a look and see how long Bubakar will be injured for. Five days. Okay, so just a bruise for Bubakar as well. Excellent stuff. Uh, right, still a couple more games today then. Uh, following game, Lincoln City, one of the lowest ranked sides still remaining in the EFL Cup in the last 16 away at St Kill Bank. Let's try and make it through to the quarters of the Carabao Cup. Come on, Liverpool. Should be a uh, reasonably safe passage tonight, but a couple of stars out there, including Andy Robertson, but that's that's kind of how the EFL Cup goes for me. It's like the first the first round or two. I'm... Oh, wait, what? What? How is that a penalty? He's just... He's just blocked... Okay, I don't... Personally, personally, I don't think that's a pen in my book. But there you go. The imps are in front. I. It's one of those where I, I, I often like to say this. I can see why. But not for me. Not for me. 
Well, okay. I thought we were having a safe passage through to the quarters. Maybe not. Fina controls. Going to need some teammates here, though. We've got one in Fabio. Pop it out to Ben Doak. And Ben McKenzie is running down that right. And still working inside. There's Huawei Guerra. He's got the passing ability. Afina Jan's got the finishing ability. Liverpool back on no terms. Okay, I wasn't going to panic too much. Go a goal down early for a, let's just say, debatable penalty, but plenty of the game to go. And that's something I always try to encourage people. When, when you go down early, just remember, you've got so much time. You know, don't capitulate. That's the key. You've got so much time. The clock is your friend. Plenty of time to put it right. The key is just making sure you don't capitulate. 1-1, one, one, and I'm sure we'll turn this game on its head. One final chance for the half, but Carvalho's going to need a teammate. Can't do it all alone. Got some lilac shirts in the middle. We win a corner. And the rest going to allow us to take it as well. One final chance before the half strike here. And that will be a massive sucker punch to the hosts. And uh, Barry next to take. Whips one in. Oh, yes. Right on cue. And Danilo, club captain, will keep him wearing that armband. Because Klopp gave it to him. So I won't take it off him. And he'll keep it till he retires. He's just headed us in front. And Liverpool strike right before the break. That is such a bonus, man. To get that goal, like the final touch of the half. That's a huge boost and a huge blow to the team to concede. Also, it sure is nice when the shoe's on the other foot for a change, isn't it? How many times have you seen me concede a goal with like the final kick of a half when there wasn't that much stoppage time allocated? It happens to me all the time. So when it, when it happens the other way, it's quite nice. It's quite nice to give the AI a taste of their own medicine. I know you guys experience it as well. You know, I see you guys talk about this in the comments. I've seen people discuss this on our FIFA career. Shout out to the subreddit conceding deep into stoppage time when it was only like one minute conceded it's infuriating isn't it so when you finally get the goal yourself yeah it's nice to give the AI a taste of their own medicine oh Guerra nicely done can he slide for Rafini? yes he can and they've got Doak on the overlap oh really well done excellently well done and Ben Doak with a travail a little bit unnecessary but it looked cool Wraps it up. Nice move, nice build up, nice goal. And Liverpool come from a goal down to make it through to the quarters for sure. Yep, may not have started off the way we were hoping, but in the end, safe passage through to the quarterfinals with the 3-1 victory. And we shall see who we've got in the quarters. And we'll do one more game, which I believe is away at Bramwell Lane. Then we'll end after that. Uh, we just need to do one more advance in the calendar. And we'll see what we'll take on the last day. I don't know whether we can stay in the hunt for a Premier League title for the whole season, but... The Carabao Cup and the FA Cup, I am seeing that as targets for possible silverware. But if we can get to the semis and the final four, we'll need to overcome one of the favourites to win it. Roberto De Zerbi's Brighton in the quarterfinals. And as we see Vinicius win this year's Ballon d'Or. So much love for the guy, man. I was emotional watching his prep conference on Monday. But for all the things he's had to endure, for all the things he's done on the football pitch, what a fantastic person and what a fantastic footballer. Ballon d'Or winner this year. And everyone in football is with you, Vinny, man. We love you so much. Right, following game. Uh, Sheffield United away at Brownwell Lane, aiming to get our third win on the trot, fourth win on the trot, sorry, and stay top of the table, 11 games in. Come on, Liverpool. Kili Bali to Rian Brewster. The ex-Liverpool man has his shot blocked, so we'll get it away. Possible chance for a break over play. It's right. Diaz, go left, go left, go left. So I'll open up the space through the middle for Cody, who you know I'm looking for, man, and why wouldn't I right now on the sort of form he's in? And as Musa does really well. There's Salah. I see you, Gakpo. I see you. Hold your run. There we go. Easy money. Cody Gakpo right now. I think the bookies have already made him clear favourite to win this Ballon d'Or. He is on absolute flames at the moment. What a bit of a carbon copy to the Leicester City win, really. Cody Gakpo strikes right before the end of first half, and we hold on to grind out a 1-0 victory. I wouldn't say we're a one-man team, but based on this start for the Dutch international, you can see why some people might say that. 11 goals in as many games as he stays the top scorer in the Premier League. The bookies' favourite to win the Golden Boot, and Liverpool remain top of the table for now. But of course, it's a long way to go, and that'll do it for today's episode of the Realistic Career, guys. So big fan of your fortune. I really hope you have enjoyed it, and if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. And much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for next episode very soon. We'll play most of the remainder of the first half of the season, try and get through to the January window and we'll have the FA Cup quarter final oh, sorry EFL Cup quarter final sorry at home to Brighton as well have a fantastic day much love and I'll see you for the next episode very soon